What's going on guys? I'm the Inhuman Beatdown, and this will be a very special episode of Marvel Avengers Alliance, as I will be breaking away from anything I was possibly doing at the time. A couple questions have been asked that I'm going to address with this video. One, I should do PvP guides. Here's my guide. Don't play it. Anyone who's seen my previous videos of me doing Spec Ops know I absolutely detest PvP. I believe it's a stupid waste of time, and while some of the rewards are good, you can basically win the game without it. And the heroes, its main bargaining point, will become available after about a month. So just farm up those command points and buy them then. Well, each me, which leads me to the second question. Command points. Most of you know, I possess every hero in the game. Every hero that is possibly recruitable at this time. Except for Bishop. At this time. Because he's not available yet. But he will be. And then I'll have him. And on top of that, I freaking have 334 command points. I have so many, I don't know what to possibly do with them. So that's why I'm dedicating this episode as a command point farming guide best places to find command points for the least amount of energy and the best chances of getting command points. First off, let me start and say, there is no guarantee that you will get command points from this. I can merely offer you the ways that I've done it. The statistics of actually getting them are numerous numbers that I don't have crunched in my head permanently, but know this. Originally, when the game started, the idea was that you could get command points from the roulette wheel, which comes after defeating the main boss or an epic boss, or you could get lucky and bosses would actually drop one command point per fight. However, after a while, a lot of guys got the idea of facing bosses and losing to them repeatedly, just getting the command point and losing. I did that a while myself too, it was a good farming tactic, but then they got rid of that. So. The roulette wheels became the only way to get command points. Even then, we've still got ways to do that. So, as I said, you're not guaranteed any command points from doing this. I just give you the best chances you can. So, let's begin this guide. First off, I'll state by doing this uh, again. The roulette wheels are the only way to get it. A normal boss roulette features one command point, three command points, or five command points. It doesn't matter if you three bird, which is fight both mini bosses and the boss together, two bird, one mini boss and a boss, or just fight the boss straight out. Those command points will forever stay. Epic bosses have a chance of earning you three command points, five command points, or ten. It is very unlikely that you will get ten, but it's worth noting. So I'm going to go through a couple places that are good for farming command points, what you will need for them, some strategies to get around the level, and the boss fights themselves. So let's move into the first one, shall we? Which isn't that one. The first one, which is easily the most accessible to all players, is Chapter 1, Mission 1. Why is this easy, you ask? It's the first mission. It's not rocket science. Since the introduction of class... Ooh, I've got a lockbox. Anyways. Let me just collect my lock. There we go. Since the introduction of classes and the class system haven't become available yet, or weren't described in here yet, you don't have to worry about who you choose, but you will need Hawkeye, but since he... He's basically a forced recruit at the beginning of the game. You don't have to worry about that. These missions, even right now, uh, as five-starred, are no real problem. I can basically just crush all of them that stand in my path. Even the boss Viper is of no challenge to me. Speaking of which, uh, while I'm finding these, another thing, uh, another useful tip for command point farming is, while it's useful, while it's useful, and I don't think I've gone over it, starring missions, 
just go back to the uh, mission thing. Starring mission, earning stars. Uh, each star earns you a different reward. One star grants you, I believe it's 100 silver. Two star gets you 250. Three star is 30 experience. Four star is one bar of gold. Five star is worth five command points. While it's good to do those at a time, if you are planning on farming any of the levels I'm about to show you, I must implore you, do not five star them. Do not five star. Five starring them changes them to a premium mission. It changes them to a premium mission or spec ops based thing. And that's where they level up with you. So if you're planning on, say, some of the later levels that I'm about to show that are a little bit harder, I implore you do not five star them. Just so you can quickly breeze through it. They stay at level, in this case, it would be like five. Um take one of the later ones level 100 it just stays like that and you're perfectly fine and you don't have to contend with it I'll explain how to avoid the starring uh, how to explain how to avoid that you can get up to about four star if you want for that bar of gold but afterwards do not earn any more stars just to make it that much easier on yourself but this one, I'd say just go ahead and do it, even at 5 star, this is basically a pushover mission. Just go ahead and get this out of the way. Ah, oh, that's cute, he thinks he's people. All these actions to go by. <laughs> there we go. And at the end of each mission, I'll explain what are in it and what the requirements, the boss things, and why you should run this level. And we get up to Viper, who is. No challenge at all for us. Actually, in fact, I'll probably end up putting her down before she even gets her move. Maybe. So that was fun. And that's it. Sell to it. Uh, also to note, there is no real strategy to do these. It is predetermined what you will receive before you even click the opening box, so there's no real helping there. It's it's all basically luck. Anyways, uh, to avoid five five starring missions, when you get this exit map, do not hit exit map. Just move to your missions go off somewhere else or just hit abort and start the mission again that being said mission 1 1 the reason you can farm it is because if you don't have any of the required heroes for the other places most places that people farm for command points usually have an epic boss in it which means you require people to deploy for it this one is capable for the fact that everyone has this mission there's no deploys there's only three fights before getting to a roulette wheel. Moving on, we'll move to the first one that actually requires anything, and that's Mission 4 of Chapter 4. Now, even if you're not planning to farm command points for here, fighting the epic boss in here is well rewarded with one of the... with an awesome item that people tend to use. 
I'm actually going to skip ahead until I get to the boss fight. So I'll meet back up with you guys there. And now that the bosses are here, I'll go ahead and cover some of what this level requires. Since there is an epic boss here, it does require one hero. It requires Storm, which I don't believe costs that much. I, I don't actually per se remember how much she costs. But if you're planning on running this level, you're going to need her. Aside from that, she is the only hero needed for it. And our boss is Vapor with the mini boss Fixer. Running, and the reason people chose this level is because if you actually run all of the missions plus, uh, I guess it's considered two burning, the boss with Fixer and the epic boss, it only costs you 60 energy, so your whole bar. Now, if you don't feel very confident about taking on vapor with fixer you can just go ahead and beat fixer on his own and then face her it doesn't make that much difference and we will be teaming up with uh, the invisible woman first off vapor can get very annoying when she's higher level very annoying so I would definitely recommend that you don't five star this level just to make it easier I need to change to a scrapper to face her. And there we go. Also, a uh, quick note, it's also it's actually worth more experience to fight Fixer first than Vapor, because Fixer Fixer comes with two other foot soldiers with him, and that's worth more experience with him and them uh, than these three combined. Just a little nifty, nifty uh, tidbit of information. Now, if you are planning on taking on uh, Vapor, I do recommend that you... There's noises being made in the background. I do recommend that you either be the scrapper to face her, or you have a scrapper that can cause bleeding and all those kinds of fun effects on her. Because otherwise, she's kind of a bitch. I always had, I always made the mistake of I only had a tactician outfit at the time I was running and trying to face her. So yeah. But now I should actually have no problem facing her. Maybe. I might still have some bit of trouble, but I don't know. I don't actually think so. They'll listen to people screaming in the background like it makes a difference. Invisible Woman, I have her future foundation outfit, so this makes this fight a teensy bit easier. If only just a little bit. Let's put the Amber Field on the hero, our agent. I can get rid of that. So as you can tell, her main gimmick is to kind of cause debuffs with all of her poison and crap, and Fixer will cause explosions, so that's not fun at all. And killing Fixer doesn't get rid of those. Still being as strong as I am, I can still take a beating from this fight, so that's another reason I recommend not uh, not five-starring this mission if you're going to run it. 
Oh, there we go. Killed him. We have that taken care of. Um, I still have a few more missions I have to run before we can hit the epic boss and I can go over him. Come on, come on. Command points. Sweet. So I'll meet back up with you once those two missions are taken care of. And finishing up all the missions brings out the epic boss, Magneto. It's actually a pretty interesting fight. And by interesting, I mean... It's not hard, but it can take some time to adjust to. Because obviously he is a lone tactician, so you want to equip yourself with some infiltrators. And we're doing this bull crap where I can't change... Okay. For this fight, I'm going to actually recommend, say, someone like Black Cat or Swashbuckling Nyko, or someone who can cause bleeding. Because it's going to be the best effective thing you have for this fight. And I wish I could change the one, because I don't want to use her. I could have sworn I could have changed her, like, before, but whatever. So, first off, it's Magneto. He's immune to psychic attacks, so psychic powers won't work against him straight off the bat. And then we get this, his electromagnetic sh uh, shell. So, this is how it... Let me wait for me to try and hurt him. No damage. This is how this fight goes. He always has a shell on him. He uh, switches from the Electron to the Positron. Electron can be simply broken. It only has like 9,000 or so uh, health to it. Once it's broken, anything can attack him. Positron, a little bit harder to break. I've never actually been able to break it because you only do like two or three damage to him. As you notice, he also hit us with negative charge. Obviously, because it's negative, we cannot break through the electron shell. If we were hit with positive, we could attack him directly without having to worry about the shell. Thus is why bleeding characters come in. While they can't hurt him, they still cause bleeding somehow. And then obviously it's just effective to have infiltrators against him because it's a tactician. I mean, that's how it works. Let's see how well this fight goes. There he goes, he switched to his Positron. And it's kind of random which attack he uses. He will sometimes hit with the negative or the positive blast. I haven't exactly figured out an exact science for it, but that's how it happens. Okay, I was going to say, is that stealthy, or am I going to hit him with this? But now that he's still running the Electron and I'm positive, I can actually hit him. And then he hit us all, and now we're all going to hit him. Oh no, is he running the... Oh no, he's running the positive... Okay. So I can still hit him because I'm Electron. Oh no, no, I'm not. No, because he just put on the pause. Okay. See, this fight gets confusing for that reason. Let's see how much I can hit him with a twisted gift. do anything, it'll possibly... Okay, it casts two out of three. I'll take that. Um, let's see. I 
What else can I possibly throw on top of him? Well, let's see. Yeah, debuffs are your friends during this fight. There it is. Still not going to be able to do any damage because he still has Positron and we're still positively charged. And we're just barely whittling down his Positron shell. Yeah, that's not doing any good. And hit me with a positive blast. So goody. He's just not being kind to me this round, or this fight. That's my only choice is to keep throwing stuff out of mystical munitions. I didn't think that actually removed the Positron shell. Uh, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah, anything that removes uh, debuffs does not remove the charges on you, and anything that removes buffs does not remove the shells on you. No. And I think about half health or somewhere around there, maybe a quarter to his health, he actually gets an ability where... If you attack him with the same charge, he will counterattack. But he'll bleed to death, be corrupted to death, long before that happens. As I was saying, if you aren't planning on using this place as a CP farm, it is definitely worth to farm. Now this item may look very familiar. The Magnetic Field Generator, which is an item I actually used to run. It absorbs incoming damage and grants additional turn if the shield is consumed. So when the shield goes away, you get an extra turn. Totally worth having those. Why should you run this level? Because it is the quickest level that has an epic boss in it, meaning you get two times a go at the roulette. It only requires 60 energy as opposed to other places that have epic bosses. This is the quickest one with an epic boss. And it only requires Storm. This is actually the main place most people go to farm. Now let's move on to my next place. And that is... As I go to it, here we go. It is Chapter, chapter 7, Mission 3. And here's why. Although it does have an epic boss, there's really no point to go that far. Basically, you just keep coming here until you get a high threat and Vector always appears. Let's get some energy. I need a little bit more. There we go. And so, I'm going to actually show this one because it won't matter. They're not high enough level to threaten me. You know what? If I'm going to do this, I'm going to have Scarlet Witch who can hit every one of these. Everyone's dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the current recommended level for this for me, since I haven't five-starred it, level 57. Yeah, everything just died. There it is. Deploy one scrapper. So we deploy our one scrapper. And go and fight Vector now. Let's 
go ahead and keep out the Invisible Woman just because she has a hit all attack. I could probably use Cyclops for the same effect. But nah, I, yeah, we've seen plenty enough with him with Spec Ops that just happened. Right, I had the Twist Gift, I forgot about that thing. <laughs> that hits everyone too. And go beat Vector upside the head. Fight's over. Now, why would we do that in that oddly specific order? Because doing that, and then getting done with our deploy, is literally all we need to make the boss appear. Which in this case is Jack O' Lantern. So as you're seeing, it doesn't require much to get here. It only requires three fights. But as it's a little bit higher in the storyline chain, you may not have the required heroes to make it this far. But it is overall a good choice. If you're just looking for a quick uh, go around of the roulette. And that sucks. So now we move on to my final place, which is the place I actually frequent more often than not. Scoot all the way to the end. That would be chapter two, mission two. Now you've seen me run this a couple times, so I'm not gonna go over it. I'm just gonna briefly explain it. Mainly because it would take too long to do these two fights. Now, what makes this a great place for farming is it almost takes inspiration from Mega Man in the fact that it is just literally a giant boss rush. All of these, except for Baron Zemo, are mini bosses. You just fight him, and it's one fight, ten energy, that's all. And it just requires Kitty Pride. Upon defeating all of them and the deploy being done, you get the epic boss, which is Viper. And that's it. That is it. On a side note, if you do decide to 5-star this one, it is also a great place for experience. This is where I ran. I had to take a drink because my throat was getting sore. This is where I actually ran for uh, leveling up all of my heroes in between the spec ops. So now you know there are the four most popular places to farm for CP at. Uh, if you'd like any more other information, I'm also going to leave a link in the description taking you to the official Marvel Avengers Alliance webpage, forums thing, with tons of threads about people talking about other command point farming areas that I may have neglected or not said, not known of, but mine are probably better. So, I hope this hell has helped you out in any shape or form. Like I said, it's not always for certain that you'll get command points. Just keep running these missions. Keep getting uh, energy from your allies or whatever. And by... <laughs> and who knows? If you get lucky enough, you might have more command points than you know what to do with, like I do. So until next time, guys, I'll catch you all later. Hasta.